Hello, welcome to the Richardson Simple Living. My name's Maria. If you're new here, I vlog about homeschooling, home life, urban homesteading, bit of all sorts really, everything to do with home. <laughs> but today we're doing some air frying. We're gonna have a go in the air fryer again. I did already announce what I was doing uh, the other day on my last video. I said that I was going to be doing a cheese and broccoli quiche, which is what I'm going to give a go. I've never done quiche in here before. I've done them in the oven, but I don't do an awful lot of them because they don't really eat them in my family. So once in a blue moon, I might do one. So I thought, well, we'll do one in the air fryer. And somebody had asked me a few videos back, would he have a go at a quiche? And I said, yes, I'm just waiting on my broccoli growing in the garden because I wanted to do a cheese and broccoli quiche. So the broccoli's grown. It's beautiful. I've got some massive broccolis. And yesterday, in fact, I was spending the day um, processing it, chopping some down and processing it. So uh, I put some in the freezer. I've got quite a lot in the freezer. But yeah, we're going to do some. We've took some more fresh out today. We're going to do some quiche. So I've prepared a lot of it. I'm going to bring you down and so you can see. I've already lined the pastry case. Um, it's an eight inch flan dish or this is my cake tin. I did go to um, use my flan dish, but one was too big to fit in the air dryer. Air dryer. <laughs> air fryer. It's one of them days. And the other one was too small, really, to do the quiche in. So I've used my um, cake tin again. So I've already lined it, like I said. And I'm going to prick some holes in this because we're going to bake the pastry blind. So I'm just going to prick some holes into it. And we're going to pop the pastry case into the air fryer, not the air dryer. <laughs> Plenty there. Bring you up a little bit so you can see. I've already got my ingredients ready for when we've done the pastry case. My eggs don't roll away. Are we plugged in? Yes. Bring it forward a little bit because it's a bit close to the edge there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the pastry case in here. And we're going to bake it blind, actually be a good idea if I put the beans in it so I'm just going to put some more um, grease proof in there and I've got some old beans dried beans just to weight it down a bit I don't want that a little bit <laughs> so hopefully that will weight it down so if it doesn't go rising or anything puffy we'll pop it in there we're going to air fry it at 160. I'm going to do it for 12 minutes. Oh, down one. And off we go. So we're just going to bake that blind. While I'm doing that, I might as well do the filling ready to go in it. So. I've already measured milk out, which was 150 ml of milk. I'm going to bring you down again. I wish I had a kitchen where you could see me and what I'm doing without having to keep moving you up and down, really. So I'm going to move two eggs. So it's broccoli from the garden, eggs from the hens. That's what I mean about a bit of urban homesteading, going all your own stuff, making things. Preparing things, without doing everything yourself without having to have any cost if you can help it. Right, we'll just give that a bit of a mix. Pop it into the 150ml of milk. I'll just whisk that round a little bit before I put the next one in. Okay, I'll we'll do the other egg. I just love the colour of the eggs when you get them straight from the hen. The colour is vibrant, the yolks are so orange and vibrant. 
And when you've had them from the supermarket, they're so, well, like a pale yellow colour. But I love these. I mean, look at that. Colour is like sunshine. Lovely. So I'll pop that one in. And we'll mix it round, beat it round. Just make sure it's all mixed in well. And then I've got four ounces of mature cheddar. So I'm not going to put all of it in. I'm going to just put some of it in and save some just to sprinkle on the top. So we'll just put some of it in. Can you see that okay? Actually, if I stand behind it really, doesn't it? But it's difficult in my kitchen. If I could even call it a kitchen. <laughs> right. Like a nice bit to spread on top. We'll leave that bit just to sprinkle on the top and we'll mix this in. Now the recipe normally with a quiche you can put cream in it. A lot of people use cream but you can use milk and I have used milk but I've used the full fat milk because the more fat the better because it helps it to set. So with full fat milk and a cheese we should have no problem says <laughs> so we'll just give that a mix there so we'll leave that like that for now and then I think we've got nine minutes left on here so we'll come back to that and just mix it round again in a bit and we'll fill the quiche so I'll catch you in a quick moment so it's just beeped we're going to take the pastry case out so we can start filling it bring you down a little just get me cloth so I can lift it. I think it's gone in a little bit, but we'll sort that out now when we fill it. Put that there in it. Move the beans. We've gone in a little bit, but nothing to worry about so we've got the case cooked now we're going to fill it so pop that there we're just going to get the broccoli we've got that behind and we'll just sprinkle the broccoli in i didn't weigh this <laughs> i just grabbed a couple of little tiny heads because i've taken all the bigger ones yesterday so i just took a couple of little ones and did them so i've chopped it up small smallish it covers it <laughs> and um i've cooked it ready and just cooled it a bit it's cooling while i was doing this so we're going to put the mix in pour it over give it another stir anything with these spoons these whisks the cheese gets caught in them might just get a fork, it be a bit easier, won't it? Do we get a fork and do it? Swap hands. Now some people put the cheese in um, when they've got the filling in. Swap hands again. <laughs> but I always mix it with it and just save a bit on top. I'll put that much broccoli in that's sort of sitting on top of it. <laughs> Not to worry. Neither here nor there. It'll all melt together. Let's give that a I'll mix it in like that. Get it to the edges then. Cheese is spreading throughout. Yeah, that looks alright to me. That'll do for me. 
We'll just sprinkle a bit of cheese on top of that just for it to go a bit brown or that's the idea anyway. Got quite a bit of cheese in. Not sure if I said but this was mature cheddar. So it'll have a bit more flavour in. Don't think we'll need all of this actually. I should do it. Right, pop that out of the way so you can see what we're doing so that's the quiche already so we're going to pop it back into the air fryer pop it back in and hopefully it will cook so again we're going to put it onto air fry we're going to Take it to um, 160 and the timing of it is going to be 24 minutes. Oh, and pass it again. And off we go. So hopefully this will cook and will brown. <laughs> I never know how things are going to turn out. It always worries me because I think when I prepared it, it looks great, I could just put it in the oven and I know it will come out all right. But I'm putting something that looks good to me into the air fryer and, and I'm always thinking, I don't know if it's going to come out all right. I never just wasted all my ingredients and my time. And I think this every time I put something into the air fryer, but hopefully it will be all right. So we're going to leave it now for 24 minutes and we'll come back to it, which will be in a flash to you. <laughs> and we'll see what it looks like. It's just beeped, so we're going to get the key shot and see if it actually looks like one. <laughs> oh yes, that looks quite good. Quite pleased with that. I'll fetch it out so you can see. Right. Just put that to one side. Leave it a jar so it cools. Right. How about that? That's cooked lovely. It's nice and golden brown on top. Certainly feels like it's set. So that looks really nice. What I'm going to do is leave it cool down and then once it's cooled, I'll be able to lift it off out of the um, cake tin and see what it's like and perhaps have a taste. So we'll just give it a little while to cool down. But anyway, um, the recipe I followed was a recipe for quiche Lorraine, so I just put the broccoli in instead of the um, bacon, I couldn't think what it was called then, the bacon. Um, you can do cheese and onion ones, so you can substitute like your broccoli with onion, in fact you could pop anything in leeks, anything like that, you can just substitute the bacon, the broccoli as in my case, and pop anything else with the cheese that you want. So yeah it's quite good it's quite versatile so we'll leave it cool and i'll tell you if it's quite tasty in a minute so we're gonna have a taste test now it's nice and cool just bring it down a little bit so you can see and i'll show you the little bit that i've cut off it's cooked nicely set nicely nice and golden on top so we'll try a little bit and see what it tastes like. So just take a bit from the end. Mm, nice. The pastry is nice. It's not hard because I think sometimes when you blind bake pastry, I worry that it's going to be a bit too hard the time it's been in again. But it's not. It's nice and soft cooked nice taste cheesy lovely and cheesy and um I could taste broccoli <laughs> mm. that is really nice you can see it sliced nice set nice so i would definitely do that again in the air fryer it was quicker than the oven as well but 
tastes lovely, really cheesy. I like cheese, so I like cheesy flavoured things. But it could taste the broccoli in it. That would also taste nice with onion, cheese and onion. That would taste really nice. So, yeah, i definitely do that again. So that's it for this week. Um, that's my broccoli quiche done. I don't know what we'll do next week, but we'll do something again next Friday. I'll have a look, see what we can do. I've got a few ideas. Um, my husband keeps asking me if I'll do a spotted dick pudding and steam it. Well, I've got a steaming facility on the air fryer, but I've never tried the steamer yet. And I keep putting it off saying, yeah, I'll do one. <laughs> but I think I'll have to read up on the steamer first to see how it works because I've not used it and I'm not sure how it will work so i will have to investigate first before i try that but yeah i've got a few ideas different things and we'll try them over the coming weeks and if there's anything that you would like me to try as long as it's not too complicated <laughs> i'll give it a go and as long as it's not got too many ingredients because my aim is to try and just use ingredients that perhaps you've got in your store cupboard or maybe something you grow in your garden, things that are easy to get. So you've only got to buy a couple of little bits that aren't expensive. So I want to try and create recipes, you know, that are quite cheap, economical to do and haven't got too many fancy ingredients in them. So if you've got any recipes that, you know, ideas you'd like me to have a go at then definitely drop them down below and over the coming weeks I'll give it a go so that's that for this week now I'll be back again on Tuesday I'm not normally Tuesdays I do homeschooling but I'm not strictly going to be doing homeschooling because it's um, the summer break so we're just going to do a bit more stuff I'll probably do a bit more home life stuff I'm We'll talk about homeschooling probably during the time, especially as Sean keeps doing a lot of self-led work. I can tell you what she's been doing. And uh, we'll just do other stuff, really. We'll just do other things. Whatever's happening is happening. It's like today now, while I've been doing this, Dean has been up in his work shed and he's doing little coffins ready for Halloween because him and Lisa like to decorate the house for Halloween. And they've been making, they've got some wood, and they're making little wooden coffins to sit dolls in. So they're doing that up in the workshop. So things like that, I'll just show you what we're doing, what's happening, what happens in a normal day when I'm not um, doing homeschooling or cooking or things like that. Just follow us around. <laughs> we might go out and about during the summer as well, if the weather's okay because we're getting a lot of rain at the moment and they've warned us we're going to get a lot over the coming weekend. So it's difficult to go out and about when it's like that. It's just not enjoyable. But we'll see. Over the summer months, we'll see what happens. So, like I say, you'll see me now on Tuesday. Because I don't know what it'll be. In fact, you'll see me doing something or the family doing something. And then again, next Friday, we'll come back to doing an air frying recipe. So until then, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. We really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Bye.